Thanks for being with us this afternoon. You were never in the camp that the Fed would pause or even reverse course. Um, you're watching inflation data very quickly. What are you looking for to tell you whether to get back in or not? Well, uh, uh, nice to be with you, Deidre. Um, we're really watching the short rates. Uh, we've seen in this recent uh, bear market that the stock directions have really paired off of, in an inverse way, the direction of short rates. And of course, that's a call on the Fed. Of course, uh, you know, if they're going to be going to 4%, we're going to have to see higher, higher short rates. But uh, we don't think they might, may not have to get there. Uh, more importantly, we're just watching the inflation data to, to give us a guide as to which direction they'll go. Right, but that inflation data, despite what we heard from Fed Chair Powell on Friday, has actually been trending a little bit softer. How much of that trend do you need to see? Could you argue that jobs may be the more important indicator here? As Powell says, there's got to be more pain ahead. Uh, yeah, and we're watching the components of inflation very carefully. Certainly gasoline prices are, are an important component and it's going in the right direction. Uh, you know, bit by bit, I think we're going to chip away at that big number and get down to a more manageable number very soon. Uh, we don't know just how much uh, uh, the Fed will actually need to see in order to start uh, taking their pedal off the gas. What's the risk that they don't take the pedal off the gas and they overextend and put the economy into a deeper recession than perhaps they could have? Well, there's always that risk, and that's why uh, investing in stocks isn't easy. Uh, but we still think that there is some good value here. And if the long end of the curve, the 10-year yield, sticks around the 3% where it's been for a while, uh, we can regain a 20 PE on the S&P 500. And of course, companies have really managed this well with earnings still increasing. So we anticipate there's a, a good story for stocks over the next 12 to 24 months. Right. And I want to get to some of your picks, Christian. You like Broadcom. Um, you call it a great tech value play. Yes, indeed. So Broadcom is uh, uh, the 800-pound gorilla in a, in a niche within uh, semiconductors. They actually sell software as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the, their, their products are mainly interconnect, and they bring storage to the computing landscape and networking hardware. Uh, not as sexy as some of the NVIDIAs or AMDs out there, uh, but this is a free cash flow machine. It's uh, producing twice as much free cash flow as NVIDIA and trades at half the valuation which is very attractive. And of course, it uh, pays a nice 3% dividend, actually 3.5% dividend. Right. Also very acquisitive. We talk about Hawk Tan a lot on Tech Check. Um, is he going to be able to pull off VMware? Does that buying spree continue? Can they keep their margins where it's at if it does? Well, he's been very successful growing this company for decades uh, through acquisition and, and organic growth. So we anticipate he will be successful with VMware. Christian, thank you so much for being with us. I'll mention a few of your other picks as well, United Therapeutics and Jacob's Solutions. We'll get to them next time.